episode 73 of the American Muslim Experience. My name is Zaki Hassan, and I'm here with my partner, Pervez Ahmed, sitting in our brand new recording space at Hub 925 in Pleasanton, California. I am ecstatic to be here with our guest, Zachary Markwith. Thank you, Bo, Zaki, Parvez. It's a pleasure to be here with you. Yeah, and, and I echo um, Zaki's words in terms of uh, how excited we are. I mean, I am just beyond words, uh, which is why probably I don't sound as excited as I truly am, because this is um, such a long time um, or a long desire and wish of mine to have a wonderful recording space like this. So I, I, I can't thank Zachary and, and the great folks at Hub925 enough um, for yeah, affording us this opportunity, and we'll be continuing to record from here, so which is equally exciting. So, thank you so much, and I, I guess that's a, probably a good place to start, Zachary. Is um, before we kind of delve into your origin story, uh, is probably tell us a little bit about about the space that we, 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 we that, that we find ourselves in today. Um, sure. Yes, we're in, as you said, Hub 925 in Pleasanton. It's a space that was established by one of our community leaders and philanthropist, Sam Herbod. It's a gym, a uh, recording studio, an events uh, area, and uh, there's classrooms upstairs, a prayer space. It's sort of uh, a YMCA for Muslims, and uh, I think uh, if if folks are able to to come in, they'll they'll see that uh, it's really a, a space for for everyone. You know, people of other faiths, uh, you know, anyone who sort of wants to work on uh, the their 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 physical well being, but we also have programs related to uh, spirituality, psychology, and other subjects. That's right, um, and, and I've been fortunate enough to attend. Um, and, and in fact, not only attend, but also partner with Hub925 in, in, in hosting an event here at Tetleaf uh, or with Tetleaf Collective. And that was beautiful. And, uh, you know, not only is the space amazing, but um, uh, Sam has spared no expenses in terms of providing this sort of state of the art and uh, just a wonderful space. And uh, I, I think your characterization of it being sort of YMCA, but with a Muslim flavor uh, is quite apt. Um, in fact, I think in early conversations, if I recall with Sam, I think that was sort of the, I mean, that was by design and by intent. Um, and I think um, like maybe even at like a JCC, like a community center, a true community center, um, in addition to uh, physical wellness, but also being able to provide a space for content and dissemination of knowledge and, uh, um, you know, information related to well-being um, intellectually and spiritually. So. Mm -hmm. Um, again, uh, thank you so much, Zachary, for making this happen. It's our pleasure. Yeah, you're doing great work, and the guests that you have on, uh, you know, monthly, it, it's it's really uh, an inspiration. The 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 conversations that you're having with uh, every, everyone in our community. Oh, thank you. And I think we continue that trend uh, today, Zachary. Maybe uh, perhaps tell our listeners a little bit about uh, Zachary's background, and then we can kind of launch into what we do best, which is uh, tell origin stories. Well, and it's nice to, uh, you know, uh, five years we've been doing this show and some of the uh, quality uh, content has been fuzzy. Some of the actual content has been fuzzy, maybe. I don't know. But uh, we're trying. We're doing our best. And uh, it's crazy to be like five five years ago. Yeah. Uh, you know, like uh, we just had the idea. And then it's amazing the conversations we've had and uh, the places we've ended up. That's right. And, and, and in those five years, we've seen, uh, I, I think, the space in terms of Muslim podcasting really grow. And I, and, and I think that's, that's wonderful. Um, we've got um, so and, many. And, and I would offer not just in podcasting. I think the presence mm -hmm. of Muslims in culture has grown exponentially in ways that were far-fetched when we started doing this show. That's right. That's right. It's amazing what how much has changed in five years. It's yeah. really been kind of a sea change in in in, in, in some areas. Um, I, know, I know we reflected on uh, Hassan Minhaj and and what representation means. And um, but uh, yeah, I mean it's been it's been quite a, it's been quite a journey and uh, one we continue to uh, continue to traverse. Yeah. Well, uh, you heard uh, from Zach. So just to give uh, all of you a sense of the the giant uh, personage we're, we're privileged to be sitting with, uh, uh, Zachary Markwith is a doctoral candidate in Islamic studies at the Graduate Theological Union in Berkeley. He earned an MA in Comparative Religious Studies at the George Washington University and a BA in Islamic and Near Eastern Studies at the University of California in Santa Barbara. His research and teaching interests include Muslim sacred texts and spiritual traditions, intrafaith and inter 
Interfaith Relations and Dialogue, Just War and Nonviolence. He's worked for several nonprofit organizations, including the Covenants Initiative, Council on American Islamic Relations, the International Peace Project, and Food Not Bombs. And he is here uh, now at uh, the Hub Foundation, and uh, we're grateful to have you spending an hour with us. Thank you so much. It's it's really a, a pleasure and honor to be here. Some of the other guests that you've had, you know, Dr. Uh, Omar Farouk Abdullah and and uh, others. It's you know, it's uh, you know, I'm 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 humbled to be with you and 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 as we did before the interview, just would love to have conversations about the work that you're all doing. <laughs> <laughs> well, thank you, and, and I think we'd be remiss. Uh, I mean, I, I know we've talked uh, a, a bit about nine, Hub Nine Two Five, the space, but perhaps say, say a little a bit about the Hub Foundation and, and, and your role here. Sure, sure. Yes, yeah, so Hub Foundation is the nonprofit uh, side of Hub 925, and it's also, it was also established by um, our, our founder, Sam, and it, it sort of uh, focuses on education, and we, we have three areas that we, we, we work uh, on. One is providing grants to local organizations, uh, especially those that are uh, schools and uh, food banks, for example. Uh, the, the second is a scholarship program, and we provide seven uh, scholarships each year to students in Islamic studies and related fields. Um, each recipient, we just awarded uh, our 2018-2019 our recipients received $20,000. So if you're in the field, but it doesn't have to be Islamic studies. It can also be political science, anthropology, psychology. The only requirement is that you, you know, study uh, Islam and, and or Muslims mm -hmm. and in incorporate their voices into your research. Um, and then the third area is the, these live talks mm -hmm. that we've called uh, hub talks after the TED Talks model. And you've been to some of them. You've helped us even organize some of them, uh, Parvez. So... Um, and you can also visit our website, hub-foundation.org, to, to view some of these talks. We've had Karen Armstrong speak on compassion in Islam, uh, Noam Chomsky, Chris Hedges, and Dr. Khaled Abu al-Fadl came and spoke on the American-Israeli-Saudi alliance. And we've also had Dr. Omid Safi speak on uh, his, his new book on uh, radical love mm -hmm. in uh, the Islamic mystical tradition. And Sheikh Hamza, uh, we were grateful to have him speak on, you know, Islam in in the United States. That's right. So uh, we're we're we have it. Uh, our next program, which which I'm excited about, is with two um, uh, really remarkable scholars uh, speaking on uh, the spirituality and nonviolence of Sheikh Ahmedou Bamba, mm -hmm. the Senegalese nonviolent uh, Muslim sage and social reformer, and uh, the, the two scholars are um, uh, Sheikh Mohammed Adyenka Mendez and uh, Dr. Rudolf Bilal Ware. And uh, they'll be, uh, Sheikh, Sheikh Mohammed will be discussing uh, uh, Bamba's uh, spiritual methodology, his treatises, and poetry. And then uh, Dr. Ware will, be, will look at uh, Bamba's dreams, visions, and nonviolent covenant with the Prophet Muhammad peace and blessings be upon him, which is fascinating. Mm. So anyone who's interested in what we can learn from uh, Muslims in West Africa, I would encourage you to come out January 26th. Yeah, looking forward to that. Yeah, and I mean, two remarkable scholars talking about um, this wonderful sage in Muslim history uh, at the, uh, in, the, in, the, in the 20th century. Mm -hmm. um, but uh, yeah, really looking forward to that. Um, so I guess, uh, as we often like to do, um, uh, Start with the, the sort of the beginning, uh, uh, maybe telling us a little bit about yourself and your background, uh, where you hail from, and, and what drew you to Islam um, in particular. Sure, sure. So I was born in uh, the Central Valley and, and, ra and raised uh, Sacramento initially, and then moved to uh, Modesto, and, and finally uh, sort of call home Fresno. Mm. Uh, which is where I grew up, and those those were it, that's where I had my my formative years. I was raised Roman Catholic, although my father uh, was was Presbyterian, my mother was Catholic, mm. so we we sort of had um, uh, an 
ecumenical household. Mm. And, and I think that influenced me from the beginning. My, my father would always come to church with us, even though he didn't take the sacraments. He would s- sit in the back respectfully. Hmm. Um, but over time, myself and my family actually uh, had, had some difficulties with certain aspects of um, uh, the church as an organization, per se, not necessarily Christianity. Okay. Um, so I started, uh, you know, reading uh, books from the world's religions, uh, especially uh, two two traditions initially, okay. the the Chinese and the Islamic. And at the time, I was concerned about the the environment, about uh, war, about um, the, the 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 sort of um, racism and other issues. And, and found that uh, these, these problems are pretty immense and, and we can't really do it on our own. Mm. So, so we need the help of heaven. Mm. And, uh, and so I found in these two traditions this emphasis on uh, a, a sort of non-anthropomorphic God that was mysteriously everywhere. And at the same time... Everywhere uh, and yet not contained by time and space. Right, and, yeah, right. Fascinating. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and and really this 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 principle of unity, mm-hmm. I think, is which which is, I would say, the hallmark of all traditions, but especially of Islam, Tawhid, the doctrine of uh, there, there's there's one God, there's ultimately one reality, but known by different names in different traditions and cultures, uh, Allah, Brahman, God, the Tao, etc. Mm-hmm. Um, this this seemed quite intuitive, uh, and and confirmed by the outward complement of revelation. Mm. Um, and so feeling that, that we sort of need the help of heaven and, 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 and wanting to find sort of a home tradition to root myself in, I found in Islam this, this emphasis on the, not only the doctrine of unity, but also a chain of prophets extending from, you know, Adam, Abraham, Moses, Jesus, Muhammad. Mm. And, and the Quran also says unto every people or nation we've sent a prophet so you 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 can uh extrapolate from that this this idea that chinese received prophets the indians the the africans the the peoples of the americas and uh the europeans mm-hmm. etc so so by virtue of accepting muhammad peace and blessings be upon him as the last prophet one also accepts those who came before him the 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 wherever the truth is found um, across time and space, mm-hmm. and and I would say it's not only a, a closing but it's also an opening of something else. As as uh, Islam has this rich tradition of 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 saints and sanctity and and wisdom, and that's sort of been the focus of my my research moving forward. Right. Um, as, as someone who was sort of raised in the church, um, the idea of one God was probably not as radical uh, of a change as did you struggle with, uh, you know, the Christian conceptualization of Christ uh, or the or the triune God. Um, was that something that, um, you know, took you out of the church or something you struggled with? And hence, you know, with Islam, not only with the emphasis on Tawheed, but the way Islam views Christ in the place of this 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 progression of prophets. Um, I'm curious if that a bit later mm-hmm. I I did some you know theological studies into Christianity uh, in academia, but um, at the time that wasn't my primary concern. At the time, my primary concern was we have this legacy uh, in the West and particularly in Western Christianity, not necessarily other uh, Christianity in other parts of the world, but of you know racism of uh misogyny of um you know supporting the slave trade and the extermination of of native americans Mm -hmm. so this this is what bothered me but then later i found christianity does have a beautiful side Mm -hmm. and it was actually as a muslim that i found that Mm -hmm. reading people like thomas merton louis Mm masigno uh that that they have a side really concerned about the poor and uh, the dispossessed, as I believe Jesus himself was, peace be upon him. Mm, mm. 
So I, I am concerned now about the theological issues, mm -hmm. but um, it, for me, it's it's enough that most Christians say that they have one God, right? And right. and uh, if if they don't insist that there's uh, three, then I'll say <laughs> we'll, I agree with you. There's one God, right? Right? <laughs> right? Right? Um, so do you have like a a, a a moment in time where you? take the formal shahada or, or accept the faith formally? Was that prior yes. to your studies, academic yes. studies in yes. Islam? It was. Um, so I was 18 or 19. It was over 20 years ago. Mm. And initially I was was studying with some friends and we just sort of said the shahada together, not knowing the exact procedure. Mm. But okay. the in, the intention was there, mm -hmm. and then about a year later, uh, I said it formally with um, one of uh, the teachers I studied with from uh, West Africa, mm. and a group of people, and um, so yeah, that was twenty years ago, and um, alhamdulillah, you know, mm -hmm. since then studied with teachers from other parts of the world, um, Indonesia, uh, the Middle East. Amman, Syria, and uh, Iran as well, mm -hmm. and and so I'm I'm really interested in in sort of um, the different expressions of Islam, right? Uh, geographically, uh, also uh, across history and and across denomination, mm. and and I I think that we're in need in this time of a um, sort of not only mutual respect but really understanding that we can learn from. Muslims of different perspectives mm. that that and if and all you have to do is read a classical text to see right. that you know we can learn something if 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 you happen to be uh she you can learn something from even Arabi who's a Sunni or Imam al-Ghazali mm. if you're uh Sunni you can learn something from Nasruddin Tusi or Mullah Sadr that's right uh, it, it's it's interesting that you went there uh with regards to talking about Shiism and Sunnism because one of the things, one of the other questions I wanted to ask you as sort of a follow-up, just given your background, um, as you mentioned, kind of ecumen ecumenical, even within the Christian tradition, Roman Catholic mm -hmm. on one side, Presbyterian on the other. Um, oftentimes when people characterize Shi'i, Sunni, uh, they, they, they do so as describing them as denominations of, mm -hmm. of within Islam. Um, and I think there are certainly parallels that can be made between let's say Shiism and Catholicism and say Sunnism and Protestant is, you know, like Protestant, the Protestant reform and the movements or the, um, the denominations that come out of that tradition. Um, do you, do you tend to agree with that kind of characterization? Right. Right. It's possible because we're translating terms from Arabic. Yeah. Right? It's always so, problematic. So I think we're, we're, we, we sort of use uh, shorthand English, like to, when we refer to, you know, tasawwuf as spirituality. It's mm. not exactly spirituality, but in the case of, of Sunni and Shia Islam, they they have different madhabs and um, they have different uh, theologies and occasionally different uh, turuq. Um, but I think what's Spiritual really paths. different is, is the historical narrative mm -hmm. is different and, and the text, the, corp, the, the two uh, collections of texts. Because... The madhabs are somewhat similar, mm -hmm. or you know, there's there's uh, from from my studies, the and these are the two that I know the best actually are the Maliki and the Jafri uh, schools. They they actually have as much in common as the Maliki and the Hanbali. Mm -hmm. You know, both both Malikis and Jafris pray with their their hands to their sides. Yeah. They they um, the the Jafris in, insist that you you pray on the earth, whereas the, the Malikis recommend that you play, pray on a, on a natural surface. Mm -hmm. So, you know, I think that these areas of confluence are interesting, but also their differences yeah. that, that it, they're, they're not uh, reducible, that they, they do have different historical narratives. And uh, as an academic, you know, I, I, I love to go into both uh, uh, traditions and, um, you know, learn as much as, as one can. Mm -hmm. um, so academically you start off at UC Riverside? UC Santa Barbara. UC Santa Barbara. Okay. Okay. Well, that's right. And uh, you did religious studies there? I, yeah. Well, I double majored in sociology and Islamic and Near Eastern studies. Mm. And so, um, uh, yeah, the, the 
religious studies would would have come within the sort of Near Eastern exactly. Yeah. Yeah, I, I, a lot of people maybe outside of academia don't realize, but when, when we talk about the academic study of Islam, certainly in the West, um, it, it generally falls within uh, what is characterized as um, area studies, so mm -hmm. Near Eastern studies departments or Asian studies or okay. uh, Middle Eastern studies. Um, and then you also have um, religious studies as being right. the other sort of um, right. rubric within which Islam is studied academically. Right. So you started off in the sort of near e or area, in area studies. area studies, right, yeah. which I think was a good start. Yeah, you? and but I think the focus mm -hmm. in area studies, and, and you can correct me if I'm wrong, I've just given, uh, in a previous life, I was uh, a budding academic, but um, <laughs> um, it, it, it is the focus on, I think, language. Exactly. Yeah, right. Yeah. And I think that's the foundation for most academic work mm -hmm. within, you know, anything related to Islam, whether mm. it's in, in any field, really. Right. Um, so I, I focused on Arabic and then studied some Persian, but um, I'm not proficient enough in, mm. <laughs> in it's Persian. beautiful language, yeah. Um, and so I'm, and, and I already, already kind of know what's ahead, so I'm going to just kind of uh, lead the question, as it were. Um, so what, what drew you to uh, George Washington for, mm -hmm. for, for your graduate work? Um, right. I mean, and it, I think at the time, or even now, right? What, was it George? It was George Washington. Right, right. right. Uh, Dr. Said Hussein Nasser is there. Yes, yes. Um, and so you had come across his writings, and imagine right. that had a, right. some sort of an influence. Yes, I think, I think most of us who've studied Islam in the English language have come across the writings of, of Dr. Nasser and the sort of school of scholars who he associates with the perennialists or the traditionalists, uh, Martin Lings, Titus Burkhart, uh, Rene Gueno, and others. And uh, I, I was I was quite quite impressed and um, by by their writings and uh, both their writings on Islam and on uh, sort of comparative religious mm -hmm. studies. Would you place uh, someone, I'm, another person I'm familiar with, uh, like Guy Eaton, in mm -hmm. that same sort of category? He, he is, yeah. Of scholars. I, he he definitely identified uh, with with that group. Mm -hmm. And uh, Swan. Yes, yeah. yes. And so I later had some reservations about um, uh, s some of those figures, Shawan in particular. Okay. Uh, and some of their views. And uh, I would recommend to, to listeners to, to read a couple of books. Um, number one, familiarize yourself with their books because they're, they're, most of them are quite good. Mm. But uh, for, for a sort of sober, more sober assessment uh, of their writings and, and a critique, I would recommend Mark Sedgwick's Against the Modern World. Yeah. And second, this new book by Gregory, Gregory Lipton, Rethinking Ibn Arabi, oh, which, which sort of questions... Um, perennialist readings of, of Ibn Arabi. Of Ibn Arabi. Mm, fascinating. Yeah. So I do think Ibn Arabi was something of a universalist, mm. but not the way that the perennialists are. Mm. Um, and so, you know, I'm, I'm, I love as a scholar, just looking at all of these um, visions and, um, and, and, and I'm not saying that, that, that one is right and the other is wrong, mm. but uh, it, there, there can be a tendency when scholars are, studying all the religions to create what's called a meta narrative, mm. which, which is, which is what Lipton argues, wherein, um, this sort of impulse to tie all these traditions together, to tie them together mm. and to then claim uh, a universality, sort of, sort of, sort of a interpretive authority uh. over those traditions. Mm. Okay. Right. So, so we recognize that they're all one, mm -hmm. but if you don't, you're 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 outside of the the circle mm. you're not an esoterist you're not uh, an initiate you don't really understand anything <laughs> you don't accept all of the religions the way that i accept mm. all of the religions right right so this is a this is a tendency that that uh appears not only among the traditionalists and perennialists but among other groups as well right and it's it's a type of elitism mm. which i think uh, lipton shows has its roots in sort of eurocentrism hmm. Mm. And and actually anti-Semitism. So I, I would recommend it. We're going to try to have him, inshallah. I haven't put nothing scheduled yet, but right. Right, <laughs> right. So, but I still appreciate yeah. much of the traditionalist corpus. Mm -hmm. um, their their writings on Muslim spiritual traditions, uh, Islamic philosophy, are, are are very good on art. 
mm-hmm. uh, critique of the excesses of modernity. Right. Um, I, you know, I'm, I'm still in contact with a few of these folks, Charles Upton being one of them. He's, he's a remarkable writer. And, uh, but, but it definitely, uh, took, took a wrong turn somewhere. Okay. And, uh, yeah, if you want to know more, t- check out Sedgwick. <laughs> right, right. So then a- as your sort of contestation with, uh, with, with, with perennialism, per, excuse me, perennialism grew, um, you know, where did you then kind of find yourself to, um, you know, immerse yourself in a tradition that would respond to that adequately Mm -hmm. or fulfill the missing pieces that you found lacking in in that school. Right. So I don't know that, that we've, that, that I had, I haven't really found, um, an adequate response, Mm. uh, to that question. Okay. But I don't think that all the questions have to be resolved. Mm -hmm. Right. So, so, what exactly happened at the crucifixion we may not know you know we know some of the details Mm -hmm. uh, but we may not know exactly what happened Mm -hmm. the exact status of uh the posthumous status of people from other faiths or people within our own faith we may not know Mm -hmm. so we can leave some things open-ended um i think what most visions of pluralism seem to miss uh whether exclusivist you know there's only one way to God and it's through Jesus or it's through my understanding of Islam or whatever, mm-hmm. or the, the pluralist perennialist camp, which is all everyone saved from all the religions is that there is a distinction between those who practice their religion, uh, in sincerity with faith and good works. Mm-hmm. In other words, those who are, uh, pious and just and, and merciful. And, and, and the, the perennials don't, don't speak a lot about this, mm-hmm. that, that uh, it's, it's not as simple as people from all religions are saved. And uh, there, there, there's a distinction between, in, in my view, someone who's, who's feeding the poor um, out, out of, out of uh, a real uh, sense of service of khidma to God, mm-hmm. to, to humanity, and, and not to, to show off. Yeah. And someone who might you know, be, you know, dressed, uh, as, as a perfect Muslim and have a, the, the right length beard, but is, is bombing the people of Yemen. Mm-hmm. That person is not saved. I don't care if they call them. Well, God knows, maybe yeah. he's merciful, maybe right. he's merciful, yeah. but, uh, we need to, we need to start right. to bring this into the discussion right. and not only around Islam, but there are incredibly, uh, pious, just and merciful Christians Christian. and Jews. Right. And I'd rather be with, those folks sometimes mm-hmm. than, than someone who might be engaged in, in war, uh, in our own faith. Right. Right. <laughs> no, I mean, it's just, I'm, I'm pondering what you're saying. I mean, it's, it's, uh, these are complicated conversations that, uh, regardless of faith tradition, people don't want to engage in. And I, you know, I think we're in a, in a moment in history right now that, uh, people are, I mean, I don't know what you would call it, post-religious, you know, in a way of people are leaving faith traditions, Mm -hmm. and at least partly or primarily because of these inherent, these, the contradictions they're finding between um, what's preached and how it's practiced. Right, right, or manifestations of, like, outward piety at the, uh, at the um, neglect of, you know, a real inner piety or... A a, 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 um, I, I, I guess, uh, where that, where that comes from. Yeah. Right. You know? Right. I definitely, people struggle with that. Yeah. I think Zucky um, raises a good point because I mean, what we're seeing is people, you know, you know and, and you know, the, we're, we're certainly not the first people to talk about this, but the idea of spirituality without religion, hmm. right. Or the idea that I'm spiritual, but I don't follow a particular faith tradition or belong to a, to, to a faith. Right, right. I, I definitely prefer a balance mm-hmm. between the, the outward and the inward, uh, the Zahir and the Batan, mm. you know, and, and even Arabi was, is brilliant in this regard. So mm-hmm. he actually found the, the keys to spirituality, to mercy mm-hmm. through the letter, the letter of the Quran, the letter of the Sharia. And, and yet, because he really penetrated it and didn't just um, 
look at uh, the, the a sort of facile reading of texts, uh, he, I think he, he comes to some of these incredibly merciful mm -hmm. uh, and, uh, and just understandings of, of the tradition. Um, but, but in terms of pluralism, um, I, I do think thoughtful folks have to think, you know, it's, it's not just about what we call ourselves. Mm -hmm. It's, it's how we're behaving. Mm -hmm. So we can nominally say, I'm Muslim, I'm, I'm Sunni, I'm Shi, I'm Sufi, I'm whatever, mm -hmm. or Christian or Jewish. Mm -hmm. But, but I think God looks at the hearts of people. And, and, and yet, I would say that these pathways, the established pathways, especially Islam, but also other faiths, in my view, uh, lead us to that um, that purified heart, that that state where uh, we're present to God, He's present to us, and and we re we recognize God in our neighbors as well. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, so, and th th this may not necessarily lend itself to this conversation, but um, I, you know, it, it makes me think of this, uh, you know, because there's this whole rich. Sufi tradition that certainly comes to the United States, and, and, and you, you know, you and I, Zachary, we've talked about this uh, off mic, but um, you know, like for example, the tradition uh, that Hazrat Inayat Khan brought to the United States in the what, or, you know, or early twentieth century, yes. um, which, for a lot of people, I think certainly those not familiar with the inner workings of that tradition, the you know, Sufi or universal Sufism or what have you. Um, would, would 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 kind of describe it or uh, um, as as a pejorative of being this kind of uh, the, the, an, an, an offshoot of the idea that we've been talking about, which is you know spirituality without religion or mm -hmm. spirituality tariqa without sharia, if you mm -hmm. want to put it in you know, right in, in terms. Um, so, do, would you agree with that kind of assessment? So, I, I, I think yeah, I've asked that yeah, question yeah. like. Th four times in terms of, do you agree with this assessment? Do you agree with that assessment? <laughs> Sorry. Right. But, um, yeah. It can be. It can mm. be. Um, and, 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 and if so, is that inherently problematic in your view? It, it can be. It's, I think it depends on the context. Okay. So, so what I'll first say is if, if one looks at, at, at uh, Hazrat Anayat Khan's life yeah. and his, his, his grandson, Dr. Pirzia and I Khan has actually studied and wrote his dissertation on this. Mm -hmm. He shows and spoke he, at the uh, right at Hub Nine Two Five. He spoke here. Mm -hmm. He shows that he was incredibly uh, uh, rooted and indebted to the the Prophet, peace and blessings be upon him. And and then other scholars have have studied and shown how often it's the local communities in the West that receive teachers from mm. the east mm -hmm. that influence their pedagogy okay. the way that they're teaching uh how islamic or un-islamic it is right there's a certain expectation mm. and it's it's replayed over time so some of these sufi teachers they come and they're they're sort of uber islamic mm. and and they they want to prove that they they have all of this knowledge mm. and then there's some that that sort of minimize islam mm. And then there's some that are sort of in the middle. Okay. And and why I say it depends on context, uh, whether or not that's all right, mm -hmm. is because when Islam comes to a place, when when it came to Arabia in the, you know, um, 610 A.D., uh, it, it, people weren't expected to do everything from day one. There was a process of, of revelation. Right. Uh, it was gradual. 20 to 22 to mm -hmm. 23 years. Mm -hmm. And... Uh, over time, the, the first thing was was basically believe in the one God and 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 give charity. The prayer, the formal prayer, came about twelve years later, and then in Medina you see many more laws. Mm -hmm. Now I think some things, you know, from day one, you know, I I think are, are helpful mm -hmm. to, to to all of us. Um, alcohol, I don't think alcohol is good for anyone, mm -hmm. so it's mm -hmm. it's helpful for for people to give it up. Mm -hmm. But if people do struggle with things. Uh, there are, I think there are wise teachers who understand that it can take uh, time for a new faith to take roots in a place okay. and, and to give people uh, a measure of, of, of leeway. Mm -hmm. But eventually, you, 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 you definitely want them to have a foundation right. for themselves, for future generations. I, I think the same argument can be made for uh, even the progression that 
one would see or one does see in the nation of Islam and the teachings of uh, Elijah Muhammad. Yes. Um, even if we don't, even if without even examining the legacy of, um, you know, of uh, Imam Warathin Muhammad, mm -hmm. uh, Rahimullah, you, 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 one argue or you, you see arguments being made that, well, Elijah Muhammad was, say, more concerned with, you know, social teachings, ethics, morality, um, mm -hmm. the theology was less so was less a focus, but the idea was that eventually, you know, again, that's an argument that I've yes, heard. Yes, yes. Mm -hmm. I well, I think even if <clears throat> he wasn't conscious of that, right? His that followers, his followers, and and one could argue, prophet, uh, you know, the, mm. the sort of the will of of heaven. Yeah. That that over time we're going to give right all of us people from different right. locations mm -hmm. uh, more knowledge. Right. And and so they, I think it comes in stages mm. when when we're ready for it. But within his context, a lot of what he was saying makes a lot of sense as yeah. well. You yeah. know, in 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 the context of um, you know, lynchings yeah. and, and we still have, you know, police lynchings in, in, in the form of, of, of shootings and, and other forms of, of killing. So, you know, I, I, I wouldn't dismiss any mm. of, any of these teachers. Yeah. Um, with that said, I, I think we're, we're, we're moving in a, in a, the, the, the best direction is one that balances the, the, the outer with the yeah, inner. That's that there's, right. there's a measure of, you know, these are the forms of the faith, right? The prayers, the charity, fasting, right? And and then, but don't forget your 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 heart, mm -hmm. and and the the sort of the inner life. Because the pushback, I mean, and 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 we can again, we can classify the pushback coming from quote unquote orthodoxy or whatever. But the idea of like malum min al din bidurura, right? Mm -hmm. Like what is known of the faith or of the religion by necessity, or mm -hmm. Uh, what what maybe in vernacular we could say the nego the, the negotiables and the non negotiables right mm -hmm. um I, I i think there are you know the voice of orthodoxy uh tends to be far more inclusive in terms of what that encompasses right like look these are the non negotiables or this is manu min um but uh but then there's others who take a more uh say um i don't want to say lax but a more wide interpretation of what that covers yes yes i mean i definitely think that that we should recognize these are the imperatives and essentials of islam mm. the pillars and uh certain prohibitions right. and so forth with that said i.e the, the outward right the, the, outward the outward reality and and i do think that those are pathways to 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 the inner mm. it's they're right they're not they're not that's what they're there for. surface level right you know the the there's a there's a not a well-known hadith that that where the prophet peace and blessings be upon him says that the prayer salat is the mihraj of the believer the mm. spiritual ascension mm -hmm. Mm. and so there's a sense that you know one is journeying spiritually closer to god even mm. if we don't see it right when we pray not only salat i would argue but also um supplication dhikrullah other forms of That's prayer right. um but uh but, but but there was this one scholar that that I studied with and and he was he was quite orthodox and still is and uh, you know followed all the details of the Sunnah to a T mm -hmm. but he said uh, it's not written on the throne uh, the five pillars aren't written on the throne what's written on the throne is my mercy precedeth my wrath that's right and the Quran begins with Bismillah Rahman Rahim mm -hmm. and the Prophet is a mercy unto all the worlds. So I think putting first things first, I would argue, is is uh, God's uh, uh, an, an an acknowledgement and an awareness of God's rahmah, mm -hmm. and and an awareness of uh, our need to reflect or embody that, depending on your perspective, mm -hmm. in in the world towards other human beings. Right, and that's how people respond to religion they they feel the presence of god mm -hmm. uh in, in in and 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 then you know if if someone's a non-muslim you know you can say you shouldn't eat pork you, sh you shouldn't drink uh you should pray this many times and fast during ramadan but if they don't feel god the 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 rahma of god in uh their own reflections and prayers but also in their encounters with muslims mm -hmm. 
uh, it's not going to be compelling. Mm. So, I, and when you study the history of Islam, it's the the great Awliyaullah who who had this baraka, who had, who to some measure mm -hmm. reflected the the mercy of the Prophet and the mm -hmm. mercy of God. Mm -hmm. Yeah, uh, to just again for the sake of defining certain terms, I mean, when, when you say Awliya of Allah, you know, you're referring to sort of the rich tradition of saints within the Muslim tradition, certainly both Sunni and Shi tradition. Right. And they, um, they, they weren't usually neglectful of the, the formal side. Right. It's just right. that, it's just that um, I think they, they realized uh, 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 that the presence of God mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Or, or, and uh, were able to act as a, as a sort of uh, channel for that. Right. Right. Yeah, I mean, again, I, I can't help but draw or, or th think of, and maybe this is a, a way to kind of wrap the conversation um, for this episode, which is, um, you know, reading Dr. Jackson, uh, for example, in Islam and the Black American or, or Islam and the Problem of Black Suffering, you know, he, he talks about, you know, the ways in which Muslim theology um, can adequately address the needs and the suffering of black people in the United States. And I think that... What, a lot of what we're talking about is how do we make uh, Islam or religion um, at large, but Islam in particular, uh, relevant to the American um, psyche without compromising any aspects of the religion. Right. Um, is, and, and, and I think there's a, I mean, and I don't think those things are mutually exclusive. That, that is, you can speak in a language that is relevant and meaningful, to people's lives without um, compromise or, 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 yeah, without compromising uh, tenets of the faith. Right. Um, and, and I think a conversation that you gentlemen were having um, off mic um, <laughs> is, 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 I think, a fascinating one, which is, you know, what we see in the zeitgeist, for example, right now uh, in America is, you know, superheroes. Uh, I think Zucky's ears finally perked up. Um, but oh, the, no, I've, I've been, <laughs> no, no, I know, I'm, I've I'm been kidding. perked up this entire time. <laughs> <laughs> but, but yeah, no, I mean, like, you know, that whole mythology. And so how can religion, I mean, notwithstanding the fact that we have certain Muslim writers who actually are writing or continuing that mythology, right? I mean, hmm. Willa Wilson, uh, you know, we've had Sa Sana Manat on the show. Sa Saladin Ahmed. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Future guest. Um, <laughs> Fingers crossed. <Yeah. laughs> but uh, you know, who who kind of speak in that in that me in that medium. But uh, uh, I, I think all of that, um, it, you know, kind of talk. And, and you know, for example, I know you and I, uh, Zucky, we've had rich conversations around the last uh, Star Wars entry, and 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 sure. certainly, one can't help but talk about tradition and religion when we talk about you know, the Last Jedi. Well, I, I think I, there's a broader conversation, mm. and this is what Zach and I were talking about earlier, about heroic archetypes that perpetuate and how what people respond to more above and beyond, you know, the, the feats and the powers and everything else. Right. Like you were the, talking about superpowers and feats, and then, like, I think Zach... No, the other way. Oh, okay, yeah, okay, yeah. got it. And then tying it into, like, the, like the karamat and, and mm -hmm. things that are beyond the... The norm, let's say, right, right? Uh, of, right. of a miraculous na na like nature. Sorry. Right. Yeah, I was asking Zaki about yeah. you know the connection between uh, the sort of the the miracles of the prophets and the saints, mm. and the superpowers that we see. And he said something fascinating. I'll let you. <laughs> uh, well, I, the 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 point I was making or attempting to make is that is that it's their super morality mm. that we respond to, and. That you know, this notion of people, you know, if if you take a, a framework of a fantastic story, the 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 element that we can relate to isn't necessarily people, you know, flinging uh, buildings at each other or whatever. But we can this idea of what is the right thing to do mm. in this situation, right? And and uh, I can't remember if we said this on mic, but certainly uh, we talked. You and I have talked before about you know what Stan Lee sort of put out into the world and i said you know with great power comes great responsibility and how how much that's like every religious tradition keys into that notion mm. uh in this new film that's this new spider-man they they frame it a different way they say with great ability comes great accountability <laughs> right and i i 
I think there's is that Homecoming or is that the no, Spider Verse? Uh, into the Spider Verse. Yeah, okay, okay. You know, fascinating. And it, you know, and I really what like was it again? The, with great ability comes great accountability. Accountability. Okay. Right. Oh, yeah. And I think that's you know there, that's a truism. Mm-hmm. That's 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 uh, irrespective of whether you subscribe to religious tradition. That's something that speaks in every religious tradition, mm-hmm. right? And and you know that that no you know I was telling Zach like well you know Superman why do people respond to it well it's a it's a it's a Christ myth yeah you know right and and how many of these stories are fall into that same archetype and then right. I, what I was saying and not not to diminish uh, obviously the importance of our tradition but the stories of the prophets they're origin stories. <laughs> You know, yeah. There, that's it's what we what we read those stories specifically because what is it? It's about somebody taking the turn from a normal life into something that is super normal, right? That awareness that comes, that awareness of you've taken your first steps into a broader world. Mm. Those are the those are the stories we always read about, right? Yeah. It's 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 when when did uh, this person yeah. become exceptional? This and, is a deep cut, but I remember this conversation we were having with Maraj when we had him talking about his book on the Sira, right? Yeah, and and we, right. and we tied it into um, uh, the, idea, the the arc of the hero, yeah, right, right. Uh, yeah. from uh, um, Joseph Campbell, yep, uh, and uh, and and tying that into the story of not only the Sira of the yeah. Prophet Muhammad peace be upon him, but also um, you know Malcolm. Malcolm's mm. story, you know, um, and, and so, yeah, really fascinating conversation. Um, and I couldn't help but a, as you were describing, you know, or, or, or t- 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 you know, talking about the things you're, you're, you, that you just mentioned, you know, C.S. Lewis, right? I mean, when he, when he, when he writes um, his fantastic stories, mm. um, you know, it's a known fact now that, I mean, it was all Christ metaphors and it was Christianity being told right. through mm-hmm. the means or the medium of this of this fantasy tale, right? Right. Um, I don't know if one can make the same about Tolkien, but I mean, you know, but all, but all the great writers um, that we celebrate, um, you know, there was a whether it's religion or not, uh, social commentary. So, for, like for example, Wizard of Oz, you know, the the, the there are tales of the fantastic, but a, a, at its core is this either a social critique in the case of Wizard of Oz or Alice in Wonderland, uh, or talking about religion. You know, in the case of like someone like C.S. Lewis or mm-hmm. modern comic books. I mean, I think ultimately mm-hmm. uh, what it comes down to is this idea of once you've achieved awareness, you can't you can't uh, go back to uh, just solely thinking about yourself. Mm. Right. In a, in my class a couple of weeks ago, we were unpacking Maslow's hierarchy. Mm. Right. And, and and, you know, what is that? Right. We have the survival tier, short term survival, long term survival, your social need, self-esteem. Right. So those purely self. It's all about the self. And then what's the very top of the hierarchy? Right. It's self-actualization. Mm. And what is self-actualization? It's that moment where you realize I have everything I need. <laughs> now I can start thinking about other people. Right. Mm. It's not about me. It's not about me. Right. And and that note, I mean, again, every single person is on the hierarchy. We define those tiers in different ways. But that that idea of striving towards self-actualization, we define it in different ways. Mm -hmm. You know, I mean, I I, I, in my class, I give the example of like Bill Gates has given away the equivalent of his net worth. He's worth 80 billion or whatever it is. He's given that much away. Why? Because he hit this point where he's like, "What am I supposed to do with all this? Mm. Right? There's nothing like I everything I need, I, I have. Right? And I said, and I always tell my kids, I'm like that. To my students, that doesn't mean you only achieve self actualization when you have eighty billion dollars. Because I said, look at Mother Teresa, she lived her entire life in poverty, but giving to other people mm. because she's like, I have whatever I need. Right? Mm. But this idea that that's what we are ultimately, that's what we you you're trying to get to a place where you're not purely consumed by the self and obviously every day we look at the president's twitter feed and we're like man this guy's this cat's never gonna hit self-actualization because i don't think he's he i mean you know what i mean he's clearly just not wired that way he's just not wired that way and some of us never do but the idea that that's mm. that's where we're trying to get to mm. that when we then wire that into the the mythologies that we plug into we see the through line mm. whether it's whether it's uh uh, uh frodo baggins mm. or 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 Luke Skywalker or or Superman or Katniss, same thing. It's the same idea, mm. right? We we the 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 heroes, quote unquote, that we that achieve longevity are the ones who model selflessness. 
right? Mm. They're the ones who last. Right. You know? I'd like to mention a couple of points. The first, um, there's this great writer, you may know him, Mahmoud Shelton, mm -hmm. who studied literature, I believe, at Stanford. He's, he's written on the Lord of the Rings and oh. uh, its relationship, its connection to Islam. That's and also these great essays on Star Wars. So I'll, I'll give a plug for, <laughs> nice. for, for our um, uh, media site, Lamp Media, we, we hope to launch through Hub Foundation. Right. He'll, he'll, he's one of the contributors. Wonderful. He's, he's written something on the, the new uh, episodes of Star Wars. Um, an another sort of really reflection. Really reading that. Huh? Yeah, it's, it's, he's he's, a, he's a, a great writer. Another uh, reflection I had that one of the, the qualities that sort of most impresses me about I think we see it in the in the prophets and saints, and we see it in the in the superheroes is self control, hmm. and uh, you know, we Rumi retells this famous story of Imam Ali on the battlefield uh, when he he had overtaken this fierce opponent, and you know, so so Ali's superpower, one of them anyway, was that he he was a great warrior, the, the greatest of his time. Mm -hmm. And yet, uh, and, the, and then the man, you know, spits in his face. That's right. right. And instead of uh, slaying the opponent at that point, he gets up and walks away. And, uh, and, and you know, in, in, and uh, when, he, when he's, he spat on his face, Rumi calls him the, 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 the pride of all of the prophets and saints. Mm. And he's able to walk away. Uh, and, and, and then the man, as a result of that uh, virtue, you know, and self-control he, he embraces islam according to the story and we see this you know sort of recreated you know in in, in other stories throughout time um i i heard a, i heard a, a story of a contemporary sufi ba muhayyidi mm -hmm. and i met the person who witnessed this mm -hmm. a man uh comes to his, his, his ba was where he was staying in sri lanka mm -hmm. and um for some reason the man blamed him for all of his problems Something had happened with his family. I'm not sure what, but he blamed the teacher, the Muslim teacher, Bawa, for his problems. And uh, he he he's he's he comes with a um, a knife. He's wanting to kill him. And uh, the person who told me this story, he he like works at the UN and mm -hmm. other places. He's very trustworthy. He he, when when the man comes with the knife and he's red in the face, Bawa sticks out his neck and moves towards the knife. He says, if this will make you happy, mm -hmm. you can take my life. Mm. The man drops the knife, starts weeping. Mm. I mean, incredible self-control. Yeah. Right, right. <laughs> and, and, and a loving yeah. kindness mm -hmm. for uh, all of creation. Right, even someone who's uh, out to wrong you. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Yeah, you, no, you're right. I think, and, and uh, I think to Zucky's point, uh, you know, it, it's 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 not only um, these stories or or that that, that we hear um, tales of morality. I mean, they're not just, you know, we we, we 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 don't just find them in religious traditions, but we find them in you know, we can also find them in popular culture as well, yeah. and and other other, other mediums. So, um, yeah, absolutely. So, I mean, I'm I'm really I, I, if, if uh, looking forward to reading the articles that you mentioned. I think that'd be a fascinating conversation at some later point as well <laughs> <laughs> and i mean this this entire hour has been a fascinating conversation and couldn't think of a better way to uh, uh inaugurate our experiences in this in this space uh than with all the ground that we covered my gosh we yeah. we ran the gamut and uh, <laughs> i think uh hopefully I, I think people listening will find it uh, uh fulfilling yeah absolutely um so maybe um as as we close out, um, uh, what's um, you know beyond uh, your work here at the Hub Foundation? Um, you're also pursuing your GT, you know, your your PhD uh, at the you know Graduate Theological Union. Um, you know, maybe a little bit of a peek on on what you're working on, and and, and maybe where people can um, engage you uh, in your in, in your writings. Sure, sure. So so I I focus on the Hadith Qudsi literature, mm. Ahadith Qudsiya, or sacred sayings of God uh, that were spoken through the Prophet Muhammad, peace and blessings be upon him. And I, I, I believe that this is a key for, for, for our uh, understanding of Islam as a whole. Mm. 
but also its its uh, spiritual traditions. I believe that it influenced uh, the the later development of uh, Tasawwuf and Irfan, um, what are now called is Sufism and, and Gnosis. Um, and there's I'm working on one text in particular called the Hadith and Nawafil, the the saying of uh, super arrogatory works, and it essentially goes uh, as I think you you and your listeners know, uh, a, a, a servant draws near through the obligatory rites, the, i.e. the the prayer, mm. charity, fasting, uh, and continues to draw near near to me through the super arrogatory the extra right mm. uh, prayers, yeah, extra salat, the law charity etc until i love him or them if you prefer uh, and when i love him i become the hearing with which he hears the seeing with which he sees the hand with which he grasps and the foot with which he walks so i'm interested in this tradition and and how it influenced figures like uh the well first the family of the prophet i believe it influenced them and certain close companions mm. it was it was narrated uh by uh, Abu Harira in, in Sahih Bukhari. It was also narrated in um, uh, Usul al-Kafi uh, by Imam Jafar al-Sadiq. Mm. So we have, we have multiple narrations, um, both considered authentic right. by Sunnis and, and Shi's. And Shi. Yeah, mm. but they considered uh, their own version to be the most authentic. They, and they're, they're almost identical, except in the Shi narration, it also says... I become the tongue with which he speaks. Mm. Mm. Uh, so I believe this influenced uh, the, the, the prophet, peace and blessings be upon him, his family, certain companions, and the early Sufis like Halaj and Bayezid. And then I, I sort of follow that up with research on Ibn Arabi and, and uh, scholars within the sort of Akbari tradition, mm -hmm. because what, I think what they have to say might be the most interesting in, in, in the way of a commentary of the city. Mm, fascinating. Because he essentially says, I'll just give you it in a nutshell, um, that, because <clears throat> how do we understand this? Mm. Right. Mm -hmm. It's sort of an enigma. But but there's there's some who, who, ta who take it at face value. That, that we, that the, 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 you know, we, we always talk about the, the Sufis as being the ones who, who go around the, the letter of the ah. law, the letter of the text. Right. When in reality, they're the ones who take this text seriously. Mm. They're the one who take the the letter of the text at face value, right? And uh, even literally, even perhaps. literally, mm -hmm. and and uh, so. But what even Arbi says is fascinating: is that God is perpetually the hearing and the seeing mm. of of all hearing, all seeing, mm. and that which transcends created hearing and seeing. Mm. And, and, and when the servant draws near, they become aware of the situation that God has always been their hearing and their seeing. Mm. Yeah, which, I mean, yeah, you, you kind of tied it back directly to what Zaki had said earlier. It's like self-actualization and, and, and the idea of gnosis or modifa. Like you can't go, once, you're, once you arrive at that point, you, there's no going back to what you said earlier. But, uh, well, thank you so much, Zachary. It's really been a pleasure and... Uh, uh, again, um, you know, thank you for the space, but also for uh, having such an engaging con conversation with us. And like you said, Zaki, I um, couldn't think of a more uh, or a better guest and a better way to inaugurate um, uh, our new uh, our new space. Yeah, yeah. And so maybe you can close this out where people where people can find find us and engage us and um, hear all their wonderful thoughts and. Yeah, please uh, let us know uh, what you think of the show. You can uh, send us an email at diffusedcongruence at gmail.com. You can also hit like on our Facebook page, facebook.com slash diffusedcongruence. Also, please go to iTunes and leave a review, leave a star rating. Uh, every little bit helps, and if you uh, do like what we're doing, please spread the word. If you're looking for me online, you can find me at my website, zakiscorner.com. That's Z-A-K-I-S corner. That's also my Twitter, and I know Pervez, you're on Twitter as well. Yeah, Pervez F. Hit and me up. Hit, hit, hit him up. There you go. And uh, we will uh, look forward to catching you next uh, time we record it here uh, at Debus Congruence. Thank you once again to Hub925, and uh, thank you for listening. We'll catch you next time. <laughs>